Now we will start with the 1790 component identification. What you see here is the hitch and marker valve controlled by the box from the cab. This valve controls the flow of hydraulic oil from the hitch cylinder to the markers. Please be aware where the serial number tag is located in the event that you need to enter the DTAC case or look up warranty or machine history. The CCS fan charges pressure and moves seed from the CCS tanks back to the row units. The CCS fan is controlled by the SCV controls in the tractor cab and can be set with a valve on the side of the fan. Electronic power modules, or EPMs, send electronic signals to the row clutches to turn the seed drive on or off. This 1790 32-row planter is equipped with two seed star controllers. One controller can control up to 24 seed sensors. Two controllers are needed for this 32-row planter. One of the controllers acts as a master and the other acts as a slave. CCS clean-out doors are used to clean excess seed out of the seed tanks or if you're changing varieties. The seed doors can be opened by simply pulling the lever and pulling down on the door. It is most common to catch the seed in a five gallon bucket or a bulk bag. The doors can be replaced by simply pushing up and locking the lever. Each tank segment has its own door. The 1790 has two vacuum fans. The vacuum is controlled from the cab of the tractor with the SCV flow controls. Be sure to check your operator's manual for the proper vacuum setting and the seed disc for the seed size that you will be planting. Now we will look at the XP row unit. Parallel arms attach the row unit to the frame. The airbag for the pneumatic downforce system keeps the row unit penetrating the ground. A vacuum hose keeps the seed on the disc as the meter is planting and we have the CCS hose that delivers seed to the mini hopper to keep the hopper full of seed. The Pro Series row unit has a meter dome, a meter housing, and a mini hopper. From there we move to the row unit itself. We have the cast iron C-shank. We have the gauge wheel and we have the disc blade. As you can see, this opener is equipped with a unit-mounted coulter, and we also have a rock guard. From here, you can see the gauge wheel depth adjustment, and also the closing wheels. The closing wheel forced adjustment is made by using this T-handle. Now let's take a look at the Pro Series XP metered components. The first thing we need to do to check out the components is open the meter dome. Open the meter dome by removing the rubber strap and unhinging the dome. Once the meter has been opened, you can see a few components. The components that we have on the inside of the dome are a seal that keeps the vacuum tight against the disc when the planter is planting. The other component that we have on the dome is the seed wiper. The seed wiper functions by cutting off the vacuum to the disc in order for the seed to drop down the seed tube. The next component that we have in the Pro Series XP meter is the seed disc. As you can see, this is currently a soybean disc. To remove the disc, simply use the disc lock, rotate it counterclockwise, and now the disc has been unlocked from the meter. Simply remove by pulling out the disc. Now you can see inside the Pro Series XP meter housing. The first thing that you see is the seed disc hub. This hub can be adjusted to bring the seed disc closer or further away to the meter housing. Please check your operator's manual to learn how to adjust the seed disc hub properly. The next components that you see are the brushes. This brush is a single step brush and it is used for soybeans. There is a double step brush used for corn with a double eliminator. This brush keeps the seed pool from running down into the seed tube. Always check to be sure that your brushes are in good condition or you might get poor metering results. 
This meter is equipped with a double eliminator, which allows seeds to be knocked off the disc that are doubles or triples. Please check your operator's manual for adjustment. The Pro Series double eliminator adjustment is very easy. It is adjusted by a lever on the back side of the meter housing. The double eliminator is used to knock extra seeds that have been pulled up by the vacuum system. In order to adjust the double eliminator on a Pro Series XP row unit, simply unlock the double eliminator adjustment and then rotate the double eliminator adjustment to the desired setting. As you can see, the shaft is indexed and you can easily see where half a hole or three quarters of a hole or open is. For corn, the typical setting is half a hole and is also the middle position on the index. Once you have it set to the middle position, lock the double eliminator in place by extending the lever lock. Now let's take a look inside the Pro Series XP Mini Hopper. As you can see, we have an elbow in here that exhausts air out as it delivers seed to the meter. As the CCS system fills up the mini hopper, the seed will eventually come up and plug off the hole to stop filling seed. Then the air is exhausted out the side vent until seed is required by the meter again and seed will start flowing. To remove the Pro Series XP meter from the row unit, remove the vacuum tube from the dome. Remove the CCS tube from the meter housing. Next, remove the electrical connection from the row command clutch. Unlock the Pro Shaft drive cable. Unlock the latch. Lift up on the back of the meter and grab the front and slowly remove the meter. The seed tube can be removed by pinching together these two tabs and by lifting here. As you can see, the seed tube is equipped with a seed tube sensor. The seed tube sensor reports information about the seed drop to the seed star controller, which is then transmitted to the GS2 display about population and spacing readings. To install the seed tube sensor, slide it back down the shank and ensure that the hook engages in the pin in the bottom of the shank and then depress the harness into the holder on the shank. The gauge wheel depth handle adjusts the depth of the blade in the ground. Each notch represents a quarter inch of depth. Each notch is adjustable at a quarter inch distance. The closing wheel force adjustment has five positions in which to adjust the downforce on the closing wheels. Right now, this handle is in float. You use float for soft soils or sand or heavy tilt conditions where little force is needed. The maximum force adjustment is where the spring is stretched to its limit. You use this for no tilt conditions or hard soil. This 1790 is equipped with row command. One of the components that makes row command work is the meter mounted row command clutch. The row command clutch receives signals from the EPMs on when to turn on and off. The row command clutch is responsible for engaging and disengaging the drive to the seed disc. This 1790 is equipped with a variable rate drive seeding system. There are several components that make the VRD system work. The motor RPM sensor on the left is responsible for reporting the RPM of the motor back to the controller. This actual RPM is compared against a theoretical RPM that is sent out by the controller. If these two vary by too much, a warning code will be issued. The next component that you see is the variable rate hydraulic motor. A pulse width modulated valve receives a signal for the SeedStar 2 controller to vary the flow of oil to the hydraulic motor. The wheel motion sensor is one component responsible for making the VRD system work. The wheel motion sensor allows the VRD system to know when the planter is moving or not moving. This sensor must be adjusted properly to get proper readings from the tone wheel. If not adjusted properly, the VRD will act erratically. Check that this sensor and tone wheel is adjusted properly. 
The height sensor is another component required by the variable rate drive system. The height sensor tells the controller where the planter is in relationship to the ground, either raised or lowered. With the planter lowered, the drive can engage. With the planters raised, the drives cannot engage. In summary, there are several requirements to make the VRD system operational. These requirements are that SeedStar 2 must be set up within the GS2 display. The height sensor must be calibrated and a start-stop point must be set. The tone wheel must see that the planter is moving and the radar must be reporting ground speed to the controller. If all these conditions are met, the VRD system will operate. If one of these is not met, the VRD system will not operate. Be sure to check all of these functions when starting a VRD system for the first time. One page that a technician should be very familiar with is the VRD data page. This page holds all the information to diagnose which parts of the VRD system are working. To find the VRD data page, you select the diagnostic button, which is J, select the readings tab, and then select the drop down box and select VRD data. Here it lists out all the inputs required to make the variable rate drive system work properly. You must have a target population entered. The tractor must be moving at a ground speed of greater than two miles an hour. In the same regard, the tractor wheel speed sensor must be moving and the planter position must be down. Once all these conditions are met, the Seed Star 2 controller will generate a target RPM. At that point, pulse width modulation will be sent out to the hydraulic valves and an actual RPM will be sent to the controller to the RPM sensor. The pulse width modulation will control the speed of the RPM of the motor until it matches the target RPM. This is how the VRD system works. If any of these conditions are not met, the system will not turn.